Hello everyone, that manga kid here to give my review of Siguatera by Minoru Furuya. This is released by Kadansha and it is three omnibus volumes. So they're they're two in one, so it's a six volume series in Japan. Um, this one, and apologies if I pronounced the title wrong because I honestly have no idea how this is pronounced. Um, but this series I am shocked I didn't I wasn't aware of this. I actually found this a few months ago. I was perusing like uh, chapters because I like to go in there and see if there's any series that I missed the releases of and just kind of check out what's new and what's there and rifle through physical copies of things to see what the what the print quality is and all that. So anyway, I was in chapters and I saw this series and I was intrigued by the artwork and the covers and everything. And, and then I read the description and I was shocked that I had never heard of this because this is exactly like right up my alley in terms of the things that I really, really love to read. And so I, I honestly don't know how I missed this release. Um, but I went home and immediately kind of looked up, uh, you know, how much it would cost and whatever, put it on my wish list and waited for a sale and then, and then bought it when it was on sale. And, this is definitely interesting. Uh, I loved this series. I completely understand that this is not for everybody and can understand if, if someone was, was to read this and did not like it. Um, these are not likable people. This is a series, it's a coming of age story about people who are not super great people and a lot of bad things happen to them and a lot of things happen to them because of their own stupid mistakes and uh, actions, but there are also things that happen to them that are not due to their own actions and, um, you know, should never have happened. So our main character is a uh, 17-year-old Ogino. He doesn't look 17. He looks like a child, but um, he, he is 17 years old. He sees himself as a loser and he is bullied every day by um, another classmate who is much bigger than him and much tougher than him. Uh, so him and his one friend are are bullied pretty consistently and pretty uh, sometimes violently by um, this other boy and his girlfriend. And so there's a lot of physical violence. There's a lot of sexual violence. There's a lot of... Um, really uncomfortable themes explored in this series. And so we follow Ogino as this bully is kind of tormenting him and really, really getting down on his, on his life. And he's just trying to ride things out until he can be an adult and get away from all of this. And so his one kind of saving grace is the fact that he is on the road to getting his motorcycle license. And this is something he's really excited about. He loves motorbikes and really, really wants to own one and ride one. And, and so he's getting his license in the hopes that he will be able to one day afford a motorcycle for himself. And you can see that this is the one thing in his life that he's actually excited about and happy about. And at the motorcycle school, uh, he meets this girl here. Her name is Nogumo. I believe. Um, and she is just like, she's gorgeous. And, and he's immediately smitten with her, but, but is very shy and, and completely, you know, acknowledges within himself that she is way out of his league. Um, but by some miracle, she's attracted to him. And so they start dating. And this is the story of their relationship while also he's still simultaneously dealing with the bullying at school and his friend who's acting really strange and um, a lot of the other kind of criminal and bizarre activities going on around him that he kind of gets sucked into um, unwillingly. And so it's a very interesting story. It's there's a lot of like realism in this in terms of the bullying and a lot of the kind of sexual exploitation and violence that happens here seem is done in a way that is really um, like raw and honest. Um, it's uncomfortable to read for sure, but it doesn't seem out of the ordinary, which is unfortunate. Uh, it seems believable to me. 
and and it doesn't it just kind of it doesn't paint it it doesn't sugarcoat it it doesn't paint it with like you know any kind of tinted brush it like really is honestly like yeah this horrible stuff happens um and that's the reality of of the world we live in and 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 it's not a nice place to be all the time um and so it's really interesting to read about these characters and like as bad things are happening to them you're like what like on one hand you're like this is horrible and i don't want this to happen to them but at the same time you're like okay um these are not good people i would say i would say nogomo is is probably the most normal of all of the characters and she just kind of she's there she exists i like her as a character um but i would say the rest of the characters in the series are really really flawed people and really got some issues they need to sort out um <clears throat> i find our main character very very fascinating he is really hyper um he's he's very passionate and he's really he's a 17 year old boy with a really beautiful girlfriend he's a he's he's pretty perverted but at the same time like his weird hyperness and like it, it's just it's quite comedic to me um and i i find it really fascinating and then there's a lot like i mentioned there is a lot of violence and stuff that happens throughout this series that is um I wouldn't say unexpected because you start off with some pretty violent bullying, but uh, it's just interesting how the story plays out as it goes along. And at the end of this, I couldn't believe that this was only like six volumes of content because it just seemed like so much had happened while at the same time it felt like not much of anything had happened. Uh, and it was a very interesting kind of like snippet of these people's lives. Uh, and I actually really, really liked the ending I thought it tied the whole theme of, you know, youth and these like fleeting feelings of everything is so, so, so important and everything is going to have the biggest impact on the rest of your life. Anything you do now is just so important. And the ending like really drives home um, that youth is a, is a particular time in your life. And at some point you become an adult and, and you move on. Um, and that's kind of the theme of this whole series is, is that youth is fleeting. Enjoy it while it's there. Do what you can. And one day you, you will grow up. Um, and it's, it's kind of nostalgic. It's heartbreaking. It's annoying and frustrating and sad and funny and it's all of those things and like all of those things can be said about about youth and and being a teenager and it just really i think captures a lot of that uh really well now i will say this was i think from the early 2000s it was written um and also it's it was clearly written for a male audience um and like that's just pretty blaringly obvious which doesn't obviously mean anybody can read this, obviously. But I think that, you know, coming from a lens of today and coming from uh, you know, the a lot of the kind of problematic themes of this series, which are thankfully pointed out as problematic, but even still, like, you know, his behavior towards his girlfriend and like that sort of thing, like there's a lot of that stuff where um, you know, a teenage boy reading this may not very well understand that some of that behavior is a problem. Um, and as an adult, I can come at this with a different worldview, obviously. And so, I don't know, I just found that also kind of fascinating, the way that things were presented. And, and um, I find today the series that are written are a little bit more ambiguous. Like obviously there's still stuff that's classified shonen and shoujo, which very clearly states like this is for boys and this is for girls and whatever. But 
I find there's a lot more blurring of the lines these days of like things are enjoyed by <clears throat> all kinds of people. And whereas this came from a time where it was, you know, like when you pick up a bit of an older series, like you're like, yeah, no, this was written by a man and it was written for a man or for boys or for young men um, without really any intention of women ever picking this thing up. Um, and that's just, I, I just, I just don't think that's much of the case anymore. And maybe I'm just not paying as much attention. I'm not sure, but all of this to say, if you've made it this far through my rambling, thank you. Um, I hope that you pick this up. If anything I've said sounds interesting to you, the art in this is pretty, pretty good. And, uh, the, the story itself, if you like, uh, Anything by Shuzo Oshimi, like Flowers of Evil or Inside Mari or uh, even ha Happiness. Um, if you like Goodnight Poon Poon or um, I'm trying to think what else. Can't remember anything else off the top of my head in this moment, but those sorts of themes of like puberty, adolescence, young adulthood, youth. And, and really kind of heavier heavier themes, then I do highly suggest picking this one up. I think that uh, this is one that, that you will enjoy as well. Um, if you have any suggestions of similar series that you might you think I might enjoy because I liked this, please let me know. Always looking for stuff. Again, I have no idea how I never knew about this as it was releasing. Um, this is one that you know, if I had known about it, I would have pre-ordered it. And the fact that it fell under my radar for, for so long was, is quite shocking to me still. Um, but anyway, glad I have it now. Glad I got to read it and glad it's part of my collection. So thanks for watching.